Good morning. Good morning. If you were here last time, you heard Pastor Alex preach about the kingdom of God being like a mustard seed. Look how small the mustard seed is, tiny. It's like a mustard seed that a man sowed in his field. It's very small, but when it has grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Even the birds come. Look how big this tree is. This is like the kingdom of God. Also, it's like leaven. Leaven is like yeast. If you put a little bit, it expands the, the dough really big. Just a little bit through all of the dough will expand the dough very, long, very big. The kingdom of God is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened big. What do you think about the disciples of Jesus at that time? Jesus chose 12 men to follow him to be his disciples. What do you think? Did they understand this? And this? Did they, did they know that the whole world would hear one day about Jesus? Maybe they heard about the Messiah and they thought the Messiah will come and be king of Israel and uh, we will come out on top. Uh, we will be independent from the Roman Empire and we will be very happy, like just our country. Maybe this is what the disciples thought. They didn't understand. Who are those birds that come and make a nest in the tree? Okay, they didn't understand those things. And let me ask you, you know about Corona 2019. Tell me, what is 2019? 2019, but really, it's a year. 2019 what? Years after Jesus. Even the whole world changed the calendar around Jesus. I don't think the early followers knew this would happen. And now the whole world knows about Jesus. He must have been an extraordinary person. They did know some things, the early, the early disciples. They knew about God's promise to Abraham. Abraham was the father. We say Father Abraham, the patriarch, first, like first father, kind of. They knew about God's promise. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I think the Jewish people really focus on the black letters. Maybe they didn't focus on the green letters. They think we're going to be a great nation, but why does God want to bless Israel? Because yeah, through them. Through Israel, the whole world will be blessed. All of the families, all of the nations. If you see this promise, 
Can you understand one thing about God? He has a mission. Maybe other gods, oh, they're, maybe they just want, mm, like the Greek gods, they just fight with each other, or some other gods have a different goal. But our God, he has a mission. He is a missional God. God is a missional God. And we see his mission in the first promise that he made to Abraham. He said, this one and this one. Again, I will surely bless you. I will multiply your offspring. Offspring is children. As the stars of the heaven and the sand on the seashore. Many, many stars, many little gr grains of sand, many children, many offspring. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because you have obeyed my voice. We see that God has a mission. But what is God's mission? What do you think? What is his mission? I believe his mission is to redeem his creation. Do you remember the story of the first humans, Adam and Eve? God said, you can eat anything except one from one tree. And the snake, evil snake, said, if you eat this, one, you can be like God. You can choose for yourself. You can decide for yourself what is good and what is evil. So the humans ate because they wanted to decide for themselves without God what is good and what is not good. They wanted to decide that. But can you imagine if God let those people stay in the garden, what would happen? They want to decide what is good and what is evil without God, and they stay in the garden. What do you think? The garden is eternity. I think if God allowed them to stay in the garden, then evil people will live forever. And this garden will not be a good place anymore. So God said, go out of the garden. But even when he says go out, already he is making a plan to redeem those people, to bring them back. He's already setting in motion his plan. And if it goes well, if he can redeem us, then we can be together again. We want to be in God's presence. That is redemption. Be together again with God. Okay, so how will he do his mission? How is he going to do his mission? Okay, first thing, he has to make a delay. Make a delay between our evil action and our punishment. First thing is wait. Don't punish them yet. Just wait a moment. Why? Let's read this one. Uh, Purnima, can you read the black? And blue will be violet. And orange will be uh, Sangmi. Loud, please. Jesus said, the God of heaven is like what happened when a common captured good seed in a field. But while everyone was sleeping, an enemy came and planted wheat seeds in the field and then left. When the plants came up and began to mature, the farmer's servants could see the wheat. The servants came and said, Sir, didn't you scatter good seeds in your field? Uh, where did these weeds come from? An enemy did this. He replied, the servants then asked, do you want us to go out and, uh, and pull out the weeds? 
No. Yeah. You might also fill up the wheat. Leave the weeds alone until harvest time. Then I will send my work workers to gather the weeds and, and tie them up and burn them. But I will order them to store the wheat in my farm. Amen. You can see this one is wheat. This one is weed, also called a tares. It looks so similar. They look so similar. But one is good and one is weed. In this story, we see God's plan. Why did he make time? Why did he make delay between our evil actions and our punishment? Because maybe we can change. Maybe we can be better. And we need some time. Maybe not everybody, but some will choose to love God. This is like the kingdom of heaven. And this time, the name is redemptive time. It is a special place. This is where we live now. We live in redemptive time. Just waiting for that day. And we want to be a part of God's kingdom. So this is the first step God has to do. And, but how, how will we be better again? How? Second is God himself provided the way. It's not us. We don't get better alone just because we want. God provided the way himself. Oh, but we have something to do also. We have a role to play as well. But first, God provided the way. As you know, God made this promise to Abraham. After he made this promise, God said to Abraham, oh, God wanted to test Abraham's faith. So he, he told him, okay, go to a mountain with your precious son, and sacrifice your son to me. So Abraham believed God. He believed and trusted in God. So he took his son up to the mountain with wood and a fire ready. And the boy, Isaac, said to his father, My father, here I am, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Where is the animal that we will kill? And the father said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Even in the last moment, the father was going to, Abraham was going to sacrifice his son, but God said, Stop. I know that you trust me and you love me and you believe me. So I will provide the animal. And suddenly the animal is coming out of the trees like there. And there is a lamb to be sacrificed. This is God providing the sacrifice, not us. We don't provide it. God himself provides it for us. But what did Abraham have to do? Nothing. He did something. He believed. He had faith. And after that, he made a second promise. I will surely bless you. Everyone will be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Because you have obeyed my voice. Before he obeyed, already God made the promise. But after he obeyed, he promised again. God promised again. So we have to believe. What is our role? What is our role? What do you think is our role? I say our role is faith. Faith. Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek means not Jewish. 
not Jew. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. People are confused. Why does it say to the Jew first and also to not Jewish? Because God had set apart this people, Israel, first. He set them apart to be a light to the world. Maybe they didn't do a good job, but at least through their line came Jesus, who saved the whole world. Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Our role is faith. And remember, in your offspring, that is Jesus. Is, Jesus was the descendant of Abraham. Because of Jesus, all the nations will be blessed. They didn't understand it, but after, now we understand that is Jesus. Okay, so I have a question for you. We know God is a missional God. Why does God want to use us to carry out his mission? And why doesn't he just do it himself? Anybody can answer, it doesn't matter. To experience working with God. And by experiencing working with God, we can grow more. The experience of working with God grows us. makes us close, intimate with God. The point is, it changes us. If we are working in God's mission, our heart is changed. And remember, that is what we need so we can come back to God. We need to change. We need to repent. And I want to share this with you as we prepare to invite others to the camping trip uh, in July. Why are we doing this work? How can people have faith in the Lord and ask him to save them if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear unless someone tells them? And how can anyone tell them without being sent by the Lord. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. I hope that you can be inspired by God's mission, that you can want to join. Many times we ask ourselves, what does God want for my life? God, what do you want for my life? What should I do? Should I study engineering or should I study science? Should I study accounting? What should I do with my life? The answer is God already told you his mission. You can join it in any field. You can join his mission. Because the kingdom is just growing. People will come from east and west from north and south, and recline at table in the kingdom of God. So you can be inspired, and you can be confident. You don't have to worry, like, am I doing what God wants me to do? Just join his mission. And that's all that I have for today. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the, the people that uh, are here. And I, and I we want to thank you that we can meet together um, despite Corona or despite our other obligations. And I pray, Lord, that your word would infiltrate our hearts and transform our minds and that we would be more like you.
and that you would inspire us to join in your mission. In Jesus' name, amen.